It's good to talk, now more than ever before. But what did we do before we all had a mobile phone in our pocket? Video calls, or even Wi-Fi? How did people let the brigade know that there was a fire? In the 1800s, people could run to their nearest fire station and report a fire. Or they could search for an escape conductor at their nearest street station. Escape conductors were in charge of large ladders kept at major street corners and junctions which could be wheeled to the fire to rescue people. At the same time, a messenger would be sent to the fire station to request a crew. These were known as running calls and until 1880 they were the only way of calling the brigade. Firefighters also had their own system to spot a fire in the neighbourhood. A few fire stations in London were built with a high watchtower this maximised the view of the surrounding area and helped the crews to discover signs of smoke or flames. If firefighters needed to communicate from a watchtower, they used flags and the semaphore system. Once on the fire ground, help could only be sought on horseback, with the coachman detaching one of the horses from the horse-drawn fire engine and galloping to a nearby station to request assistance. In 1866, the brigade began using telegraphs, mainly between fire stations and other brigade establishments. Members of the public continued to make running calls until 1880, when street fire alarms were introduced. These were first installed in 1880, normally positioned on pavements at street corners where they could easily be seen. They were connected directly by landline to the local fire station. When activated by the caller, the alarm bell sounded in the fire station and the location of the alarm sounded was indicated. Street fire alarms were sometimes set off unnecessarily. These hoax calls became such a problem that in 1895 an Act of Parliament prohibited false alarms with a maximum penalty of a £25 fine or three months imprisonment. These street fire alarms were taken out of use in 1958 as by then the number of home telephones and public phone boxes meant that they were no longer needed. Telephone systems were introduced in 1880. The number of private homes with phones grew slowly at first and the first public phone box only appeared in 1905. But gradually, telephones replaced the telegraph for communication in London Fire Brigade. The UK's 999 number is the world's oldest emergency call telephone service. The system was introduced following a fire in a house in Wimpole Street on the 10th of November 1935, in which five women were killed. As a result, it was decided that an emergency number should be introduced to prioritise all fire, police and ambulance calls. It was launched here in London in June 1937. Over a thousand calls were made in the first week alone. 1938 saw the formation of the Auxiliary Fire Service, or AFS, and when war broke out in September of 1939, thousands of men and women volunteered for various AFS roles, including managing the communications network and mobilising fire appliances from the watch rooms of fire stations and substations across the city. Many became motorcycle dispatch riders and were responsible for relaying messages between firefighters and local fire control rooms. The AFS was reorganised in 1941 to form the NFS, or National Fire Service. Staff officers were appointed to headquarters in Lambeth, where they focused on the recruitment and employment of women in a number of roles, including control. Post-war saw the disbandment of the National Fire Service, and responsibility for firefighting and communications went to individual counties and boroughs. Each area would manage their own calls. In 1948, a new control room was set up at Lambeth headquarters. Rather than send calls straight to the fire stations, the exchange now passed all fire calls to Lambeth Control to make operations easier to coordinate. The Greater London Council was formed in 1965, taking in many of the outer stations that we now know as London Fire Brigade. The amalgamation of these areas created just three control rooms, located in Wembley, Stratford and Croydon, managing approximately 110 stations between them. In 1990, the three control rooms and one operations room were merged together to form the Command and Mobilising Centre based at Lambeth. 
It was here that London's first computerised mobilising system was introduced. Calls could be directly entered onto the screen and sent straight down to the fire station printer. The control room moved in 2004 to Canary Wharf and then again in 2012 to its current home in Merton, South West London. More than 100 control room officers are based at the London Operations Centre, looking after 103 fire stations. London Fire Brigade received over 160,000 emergency calls last year, just a proportion of the 30 million 999 calls that BT handles every year.